Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, by Meriton, by YX Genomics, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is Art on Stage. We'll learn more about a local fine art museum and public garden distinguished by its diverse and innovative programs in the arts and horticulture, a performing arts center presenting high quality artistic endeavors to educate, engage, enrich, and transform, and a jewelry store with a long legacy of special moments in supporting the arts, sometimes even doing it a cappella. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2015. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're a local fine arts museum and they have a public garden and a number of innovative programs. Absolutely amazing. I'm here with the director of the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, Kevin Sharp. And so amazing facility, a very sure. long legacy. So give us a little bit of a snapshot for the history when you talk about the Dixon. Well, the Dixon is just one of the special institutions in the city of Memphis. It was founded 40 years ago by Hugo and Margaret Dixon, two of the most important cultural philanthropists the city of Memphis have ever known. And we do a range of really great programs, exhibitions, and special events out at the Dixon. So really there's something for everybody there. Well, and your collection, your private collection is world famous. I mean, when you look at Truly. the paintings, when you look at the porcelain, give us some of the standouts when you talk about both sides there. When most people think about the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, even internationally, they think about our wonderful um, French Impressionist paintings collection. And it really is something very, very special, probably the finest collection of French paintings in the in the South or even this part of the United States. So anyway, it is a it's such wonderful artists as Monet, Renoir, Cezanne, Degas, any number of others are represented in these in these remarkable holdings and they're here in Memphis in the galleries, you know, every day for people to and come and see. And we get to enjoy them. And we get to enjoy them. They're very, very special. And so, parlay that over to the garden because, I mean, you have a rare opportunity on both sides as you get to walk through and you get to see, and we'll talk about the exhibits in a second, but this amazing artwork inside. Right. And then you also have artwork outside. That's, it. That's exactly right. It's a, um, we really think we're at our best at the Dixon when we are tapping into that synergy between the fine arts and nature. Um, we're a 17-acre public garden. We are, I'm fond of saying, I go to work at the 17 most beautiful acres in Memphis, and it's really pretty hard to argue with me. The grounds are beautiful. We do lots and lots of plant-based exhibitions in the, in the gardens. Um, last spring, we planted about 120,000 tulips, and that was very special, but we're always doing something in that arena. But more and more, we're also trying to put works of fine art in the gardens as well so we can like i said tap into that synergy remember many of the impressionist paintings that are in the galleries are about the landscape right. and so if we can if we can make that work both ways with the things we put in the garden speaking to the fine arts collections well that's just a home run for us so you've got the permanent collection but also you have a number of exhibits that you bring in and talk about the diversity of the exhibits and just how that tends to work throughout the year we turn the galleries about four times a year so there are four major, sh at least four major shows every year. And the exhibition that we're most excited about right now is one that's coming up called Wild Spaces Open Seasons, Hunting and Fishing in American Art. And it's a show that will feature some of the most important artists that the United States has ever produced, starting at about 1800 and going right up until World War II. 
So your membership, you've got the membership component, but you also have some free days and opportunities for people to come out and enjoy. So talk about that dynamic. We absolutely are. We feel that our service to the community is one of the most important things we do. Many of our education programs are free just, be, um, just because we can make them be free. And, um, but we also, we also are free every Saturday morning from, from 10 till noon. And that we have a thing we call Pay What You Wish Tuesday. So, you know, if you want to come and, and don't necessarily have the $7 uh, for the admission fee, that's a day to come and just give us what you can or what you feel you want to and come on in and enjoy the Dixon. And talk about the other programs, because you have, I mean, we mentioned innovative programs. You have a lot going on we above do. and beyond just the exhibitions. I mean, there's a lot of just programs throughout the summer, throughout the year. Share with us some of those. We do we do a lot of programming. Uh, we have a very dynamic um, education director at the Dixon, a woman named Margarita Sandino, who has any number of standing education programs for people of all ages, for children as young as two. We have a program called Mini Masters. Um, for young children and their parents or grandparents or caregiver. And then we have, we have programs for seniors as well that where we actually will come to, um, come to the facility where they are, at, like whether it's, whether it's a program at a public library or an assisted living facility and try to stimulate creativity in, in those folks as well. And then we have something for everyone in between, you know, whether it's gallery walks, lectures, talks, you name it. There's just, there's just something for everybody at the Dixon workshops. And to me, the one thing I love about art is that you can be a fine connoisseur and you can know a lot, or you can know almost next to nothing, but you can walk through and you can literally just ask, what do you see right. and why do you see it? And especially exactly with your kids, right. coworkers, friends, whatever it is, it starts a whole important dialogue because just looking at one piece of art, you might see something completely different than I see it. Of course. But it starts this amazing opportunity to build a relationship. No, you're exactly right, Jeremy. There's, you know, there is something in works of art for everyone. It's just slowing down, taking the time to actually look rather than just watch. You make it very easy, I know, for special events, weddings, parties, all sorts of stuff. You have an amazing facility for all of those. What are maybe one or two other ways that the public can help? The best way to plug into the Dixon is to become a member, and membership starts at forty-five dollars for an individual member, and then you know you could be a, a FedEx-style ten thousand dollar member as well. What that membership does is makes you part of the Dixon. It makes you a, it makes you a, you know, a philanthropist of sorts and a supporter of the arts, and that's a really valuable thing. But it also helps you to find out and learn about the things that are going on at the Dixon on any, on any given day. And there's always something going on at the Dixon. So tell viewers where they can learn more about the Dixon. Well, just go to our website, dixon.org, or any of our many social media platforms. It's very easy to find us. Just, just um, plug in and we're there. Well, I greatly appreciate all you do for making the arts so accessible and so interesting and vital to our community. So thanks for coming on the show and sharing it. Well, we love it. And thanks. We love the spark, too. They're a performing arts center, educating, enriching, engaging, and transforming our community. I'm here with the executive director for the Germantown Performing Arts Center, GPAC, Paul Chandler. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So GPAC, uh, fun acronym. I think everybody knows it by at this point, but you do a lot of amazing things out there at the Germantown Performing Arts Center. So give us a little bit of context. Let's start with history. So give mm -hmm. us some history for GPAC. So we're 22 years old, actually going on 23. Uh, I worked there as the assistant director when it opened for about six and a half years. So I was there during its birth and then came back as the executive director uh, just four years ago. Um, we're a multidisciplinary performing arts center. Uh, we produce and we educate and we're also a, a major rental facility in this market. And so give us how large of a theater, so give us some, give us some scope. So we're 864 beautiful seats with lots of leg room and lots of width and lots of cushion. We pride ourselves on comfort. We do have no center aisle, so uh, um, every seat's a great seat, so they say. They say we're acoustically perfect, but perfection is hard to achieve, but we're pretty darn close. We have a, a black box theater, which houses approximately 200, where we have uh, dance, 
of receptions and we teach and educate in that space you have such a huge variety of artistic endeavors between music and bringing in you know world renowned artists all the way through the theater and so many different areas and even special events so walk us through some of the dynamics if you will for GPAC so you know that the, that uh, that model began in the beginning um, as different directors came in new programs came in uh, we have tremendous support in our community. The city of Germantown is also a tremendous support. So that's just allowed us. Plus, you know, I think we have a really great team. And we execute very, very well. And we have uh, 100,000 people will enter our doors on the education side and the performance side. We have a dance series, a jazz series, an international series. Our classical music is uh, handled by Iris Orchestra. Uh, the list goes on and on. In terms of users, Opera Memphis has main stage performances out there, MSO performs out there, New Ballet Ensemble, our own uh, youth orchestra performs several times a year and rehearses, coupled with the Germantown Community Orchestra and the Germantown Chorus, and I'm certain I forgot. Well, about I say, that's a lot to keep up with right there. So kudos, it is. but I mean, you literally have something for everyone, right? I, I mean, really that's do. the idea. I really do. And, and walk us through when you look at, you know, already the legacy. You've had some very, very special moments, and you know, give us maybe one or two that stand out to you, either from a performance, an artist. What are some special moments wow. so far? You made me have a chill. Yeah. See, there you go. I you was just remembering um, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Yo-Yo Ma's first performance in Memphis. Yitzhak Perlman's, um, the creation of Iris Orchestra was probably our greatest artistic endeavor. Um, the first performance in, in the Memphis market for Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Um, and then most currently, we produced an outdoor food truck and music festival, and we thought 750 people would be a hit, and 2,500 people showed up. <laughs> so nice. we're building an outdoor venue just to our north uh, not because of the Food Fest, but because it was an idea about two years ago. And so we're going to roll that out this fall, uh, begin the design work. It's pretty exciting. And we'll have the f only outdoor venue with an indoor option in case the weather goes south, which is just going to be magical. And Absolutely. I can't wait for that to happen. So talk about a little, you, you've got some upcoming huge shows and productions, so give mm -hmm. us a little bit of a teaser on that front, or what, what are some of the ones that you think everybody needs to know about? Well, probably our two biggest sellers are John Hyatt on our American Music Series and Al Jarreau. Both of those will sell out any time now. We've got John Hyatt in early November, Al Jarreau in the winter. We have Joey Alexander, this phenom, 14-year-old jazz piano player. He was on the Grammys nominated for a Grammy, it's on CBS Sunday Morning, 60 Minutes. Uh, Wynton Marcellus was quoted saying, I have never heard anybody play jazz piano like that young man, which wow. is a big statement. Uh, Lisa Fisher is coming up in uh, late October, early November. That is the, she was on 20 Feet from Stardom. She was the backup singer for the Rolling Stones who sang Gimme Shelter, you know that big, mm -hmm. big voice? Yeah. So Lisa Fisher's coming, Momix is coming on our dance series, uh, the list goes on and on. We're, we kick off in the in this fall and we go all the way through into May and other users in our building will present all the way into June. Talk about, you've been talking about it, but the educational side, so the, the outreach, the community engagement on that side. We have a, a, um, our youth orchestra, GPAC Youth Symphony Orchestra program is now on its seventh year. We have 140 students. Uh, that's our best kept secret. I mean, our students are going on to Juilliard and Berkeley and major orchestras, uh, ma major colleges in the United States. That's just fantastic. They're always in our building. Uh, they've toured uh, China and Europe through our wow. GPEG Journeys program. Uh, we educate in summer camps. We have dance classes. We have guitar classes. And we have a really great thing called Art Savvy, which is uh, adult education classes, and those are all free, and they're always tied into a main stage performance, so people can learn something, learn a new dance, or we watch a film and bring in the filmmaker. It's been a really great bring experience. Bring it all to life. We do, and we are always hopping. I, you know, we counted it uh, earlier this year. We have 249 occurrences in a year, and we don't program in the summer which wow. is pretty remarkable. So it's, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> so obviously uh, purchasing tickets, coming out and seeing everything, experiencing it, um, the junior programs. 
What's maybe one other way that we can help? Oh, uh, make a contribution. <laughs> Easy enough. <laughs> I think we're gonna, uh, we will be launching our capital campaign, which is going to be a big endeavor for us this fall to build that outdoor venue. That's a project I'm very, very excited about. Uh, but to reach us, it's gpacweb.com. We're on every social media platform. And our box office number is 751-7500. I greatly appreciate everything you do for bringing the arts front and center to everyone here in the Mid-South and for coming on the show and sharing it. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Each year, the Spark Awards honors businesses, nonprofits, and individuals doing their part to make the Mid-South a better place. Our most recent winner for nonprofits with budgets under $1 million is Camp Good Grief and the Kimmons Wilson Family Center for Good Grief. Camp Good Grief started in 1999. It's the first children's grief camp in the Mid-South, and that's for six to 12 year olds. Over time, that grew into a camp for teenagers, a camp for adults, and then really we needed to put walls around our program and to offer grief counseling all year long. So we have the Kimmons Wilson Family Center for Good Grief staffed by trained professionals. There's six therapists that work there that are mental health providers, but all that we do is free of charge. The camps are free of charge and open to the community, as is the individual grief counseling. We're funded through grants and donations, so fundraising is a huge piece of the work that we do so that we keep this service available for the entire community free of charge. Grief is the most universal experience there is, and we do not want people out there grieving alone. And walk us through, because the center is amazing. You have a special room called a volcano room where kids can bash out their anger, so there's a lot of science that goes into what you do. The center is developed on the way that uh, children grieve, the way adolescents grieve, and the way that adults grieve. And they grieve in very different ways. So the children's rooms look more like a playroom, because oftentimes children show their grief through play, where the teens might need more of a physical release. Um, even the adults, we have a room where they can, it's an anger management room where they can express that. We have an outdoor ropes course that we can work with a family as a whole to focus on the changes that they've experienced and how they're trying to create a new normal in their their life since their loved one has died. The center is growing. We currently have a waiting list, which is very hard for us, and we don't want people grieving alone. But people are coming to us from all over, even outside of the Mid-South, because there's no other service like this. So with camp each year, we take um, over 100 children to camp, to our camps. We, um, we see over um, 3,000 people individually a year at the Grief Center. So people are coming, and people are coming not just from um, illness-related deaths. We work majority with people who've had a traumatic death. So the schools refer to us, um, other mental health providers, police officers, things like that. While the Junior League of Memphis has had a community partnership with Camp Good Grief, we supply both volunteers and funding for the camp. We believe that this camp changes children. It teaches them how to grieve in a healthy way. Grief can be experienced in many different ways, but it teaches them that they are okay if they want to be sad, if they want to be happy, if they want to talk about their loved one, or if they don't. Um, and what we think, we believe that by teaching them how to grieve, they become more emotionally balanced as adults. And that's important to Memphis and it's important to the Junior League. They're a jewelry store with a long legacy of special moments and making a difference right here in the Mid-South. I'm here with the owner of Mendicow Jewelers, Jay Mendicow. So when we talk about Mendicow Jewelers, you have a long legacy. We're talking over 125 years. So give us some history. <laughs> it's a long story. My, my great uncle came from America from the Ukraine in a fiddle on the roof kind of story. And he ended up in Memphis. And we're not exactly sure why he ended up in Memphis, but he did. Uh, perhaps the economic op opportunities were here that he saw. And he ran the store until 1935. My grandfather took over, which, who was his younger brother, and that's how I ended up here in Memphis. It's a family business. It's a classic story of an American family business. And so on your end, I mean, arts is kind of the central theme for the show, and art plays a vital role not only in your store, but we'll talk about your philanthropy as well. Right. But obviously in your store, I mean, you're working with very well-known artists from around the world to create this jewelry, and you're known for picking the right diamonds and jewels. So give us some, some 
text there. What are some of the things that you look for that create a special moment for, you know, someone who's going to propose to his fiance? I mean, what, what makes a special moment in your eyes? Uh, a special moment is when a piece of jewelry speaks to the customer and customers come in, they can look at many diamonds, many pieces of jewelry, but every piece is unique and everybody at some point finds something that speaks to them, that they want to have that will be passed down from a generation to generation. Even the diamond I gave my wife, when I saw it, when we got engaged 18 or 19 years ago, I knew it was the one. And I've seen thousands of diamonds, but I was looking for something in general and then one opened a paper and looked at it and it spoke to me. And so you've got not just rings, you've got necklaces, you've got watches, you've got uh, all sorts of stuff. Give us an idea, kind of tease us a little bit with some of the offerings there at Mednikau Jewelers. Mednikau is a different kind of jewelry store than many others in this city and many others anywhere. We, we do sell the basics, but we specialize in designer jewelry and real art that can be worn. And that's how we're different. So we have fine, well-designed pieces of jewelry the customer is getting not only excellent quality materials and workmanship, but excellent quality design. And that's what we specialize in, what we're most proud of, because we have an eye for design. Well, and you've got a very wide uh, array, not only in terms of the offerings, but the prices you hit. So mm -hmm. you've got sure. something for everybody. But you also have, you're one of the f very, very few, very, very few that has things like Patek watches. When you talk about Patek right. Philippe watches, I mean, mm -hmm. that's very, very exclusive. So you're one of the few that covers this huge, wide range. We have a, an, a business model that is somewhat the old style jewelry store. We cover the whole range from $500 pieces of David Yerman to $100,000 Patek Philippe watches, which are the Rolls Royce of the watch world. We run the gamut. We like to find customers when they're young, even teenagers, to buy Yerman and then get engagement rings and carry them with us for life. It's a very fun thing to watch well, a person. That's where that 125-year generation. And, so. we, and we have people whose parents and whose grandparents bought their rings from us who come in today to buy rings. So let's switch over and talk about the support of the arts in the community. So you yourself, heavily involved, part of the Harvard Glee Club, you're part of uh, Delta Capella, so you have your own a cappella band that gets out there and performs, but share, share some sure. Delta Capella. <laughs> the arts are very important to us. Um, my dad's sister was a concert pianist who taught at Juilliard her whole career, so music runs in my family. And when I was at Harvard as a college, college student, I joined the Glee Club and I joined an a cappella jazz vocal group. And I came back to Memphis after going to college and working in New York for a couple of years, and there was nothing like it. So I started my own a cappella vocal band. It's called Delta Capella. And a cappella music has exploded at this point. There, uh, Glee was kind of the start, even though it wasn't technically a cappella. But then the sing off came, off, came, up, came on on NBC TV, and there have been pentatonics. Uh, right. There's been major top 40 hits done a cappella. I've been doing it my whole life. I love it, it's a great art form, it involves teamwork. Uh, I'm not an athlete, I'm an artist, and that's my form of teamwork, is working with 12 other guys to produce vocal sounds that sound like a rock or a pop band. And it's amazing, I mean, just hearing some of the tracks myself, it's, it's amazing. So um, give us an idea of some of the other things that when you talk about arts, I mean, you, you're heavily involved in so many things, but sure. give us maybe one or two other things that are near and dear to your heart. Well, anything, doing having to do with the arts in Memphis is important to us. We, we're big supporters of the, of the Memphis Symphony and of the ballet and of the Dixon Gallery. And we, are, we believe in the arts in Memphis. The arts are the backbone of the community. That's what helps attract businesses that drive the economic growth of the city. So, so we do what we can. Well, and to me, it's a perfect tie with Mindicow Jewelers. I mean, you, you specialize in art in one form here, right. and to be able to specialize in giving back to the arts over here, I exactly. think it, it's a perfect synergy. There you go, exactly. So tell viewers where they can learn more. How can they pop into the store? How can they see everything we're yeah. talking about at Mindicow Jewelers? Well, our store is located at Perkins Extended in Poplar, where it has been for 40 years. And we have stores in Nashville and Atlanta, Atlanta also, if they happen to be traveling to those cities. And we're in the prime shopping districts of those cities, too. And Mednikau's there are slightly different. We tailor the merchandise for the market. So you should visit us in other cities. Online, we have a website, mednikau.com. And, of course, the typical social media that people know about, Facebook and Instagram, are important to us. And we're learning because we're an old-school business, and it's a new world for us in terms of advertising. Uh, but it's it's what happens? Change is inevitable. 
Well, I absolutely love everything you do, not only on the jewelry store front and providing amazing customer service and amazing products and jewelry uh, between watches and, and bracelets and necklaces and rings, of course, but also to, to be able to, to see your heart throughout the community giving back to the arts. Thank I appreciate so it. So. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Thank you. The Mid-South has an impressive legacy when it comes to art. Yes, we're the home of the blues and the birthplace of rock and roll, but we also have some of the most renowned fine arts museums and performing arts centers in the country. As we saw this month, the Dixon Gallery and Gardens has a permanent collection of over 2,000 objects, including French and American Impressionist paintings and significant holdings of German and English porcelain. With numerous exhibitions and collaborative events using their public gardens, there's something for everyone to enjoy. With its acoustically perfect 864-seat venue, GPAC presents us with world-renowned performing artists in a variety of genres, year-round educational activities for all ages, rotating visual arts exhibits, and community events that welcome over 100,000 visitors each year. Then companies like Mendicow are not only promoting and sharing art in their stores, they're supporting and investing in it year-round in our city as well. And yes, it's awesome to see business owners like Jay rock it a cappella. Art on stage truly makes our city great. So thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of the spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.